Welcome to Electric Ocean Solutions YouTube channel. Today we are going to troubleshoot a GFCI. What's up? Today we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot GFCIs. GFCI uh, issues are one of the most common problems I get calls about. Um, and they can, because of their application, sometimes they can be very easy to fix. And it may leave the customer a little bit upset if it takes me five minutes just to push the GFCI button. But here I'm trying to save you guys some money and help you out and walk you through this process. So. This is the interior wall to uh, the condo upstairs. Sometimes what will happen is they will wire this outlet to your bathroom lights, um, your bathroom outlets, maybe a laundry room outlet. I've never really seen it tied to the kitchen, but this will usually also tie to your outdoor outlets as well. Um, I've gotten many calls, hey, my bathroom lights aren't working and you come in, find the exterior wall to the house because that's typically where it is, not always. Um, and you come, see it's been tripped, press the button, if it turns back on, that's your issue. Um, that may be a GFCI going bad, um, but there's lots of other ways to troubleshoot that. What I use generally, first off for the, the testing of it, is gonna be just a simple uh, GFCI tester. So I'm gonna read you guys straight out of the code book where they're supposed to be located. This is from the 2020. Um, it says bathrooms, garage, and also accessory buildings that have a floor located at or below grade, not intended as uh, habitable rooms, outdoors, crawl spaces at or below grade level, basements, which was just added this year to the 2020. And I know that because it's, as you can see, it's been, they put it in gray where the receptacles are installed to, to serve the countertop services, sinks. Um, where receptacles are installed within six feet from the edge of the bowl of the sink, boat houses, bathtubs or shower stalls where it's six feet from the outside edge of the, the bathroom stall or laundry areas. And they've also added indoor damp and wet locations. Um, so the first thing that I will do is I will come test to see if we have power. I do have power here. We also want to make sure that this thing trips. You've heard it, the button popped out. There's no power there. If we push it back in and we get power back, this GFCI is good. So these do fail um, quite often. And I believe, I've seen a statistic that says one in eight fails, but when they do fail, they fail closed. So um, it is something that you wanna check every so often, especially if you do have little kids and whatnot. Um, so that'll be the first thing that I do is, does it have power? Now, if I'm looking for what it feeds, I will also check other places that I know where the GFCI is, like the outdoors, um, the typically bathroom areas, whether it's the light or the receptacles. Those are generally the two areas that I see that they tie the GFCI to most common. Um, and that's important because it's not always the GFCI that's bad if it's if it's not working. It may you may have a piece of equipment that is is shorting out, and that's the reason that it's tripping. So it's actually doing its job. Um, you could have lighting that's going bad. There's all sorts of issues that can be caused by that for the GFCI to actually do its job. So the GFCI is doing numerous things. It's testing an imbalance of current, plus or minus. So it's in between four and six milliamps, I believe. Um, it's also testing for a neutral to ground location on the load side of the GFCI. It's typically one of those two things that it's doing. Um, and, it, and it is also made to protect uh, a old wire application. Let's say it was built back in the day when they only used two wires. Um, so you can now use three prongs with that and put a GFCI to make it so you can use three prong outlets because technically if it's only a two wire outlet and there's no grounding in the box, you cannot use that. I am gonna make a video about that um, soon because it is a very common mistake, especially in old houses because people think, hey, I got this two wire, I got this, uh, I got this two prong apple, uh, outlet, I got this three prong outlet, we'll just swap it, no big deal. 
There's a huge problem there and it's a major danger risk. Yep. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my tester, put it into here, see if I, if I got any action. If these two lights aren't lighting up, we got a problem. As you can see here, then the first thing I would do is I would press this uh, black button. The black button here, which is going to be your test button. I got nothing going on there. So either the GFCI is bad or I have no power. Then I'm going to test to see the incoming power source. Just going to use my tester, my non inductive tester, real quick, and see the black wire. I got nothing that coming in, no action, staying green. That tells me that I got a power problem. That tells me it's, it may not even be the GFCI, I gotta go check the breakers. Yep. If the breakers aren't tripped, um, I would then take off the panel cover and test it to make sure that there's actually breakers coming, or power coming off of the breakers, because if that, that may be your problem as well. If not, then there's a, a loose connection or a cut wire somewhere. So here, when we pull this out, um, you can see you have two wires coming in on your hot and your neutral side and one pigtail coming off. The one pigtail is coming to the side that says line. You have one that's line and this one that's taped over is load. You can barely see it. There you go. You see line. And load. Line and load. And you'll have one side with a brass, one side with silver. This is gonna be your black wire. This is, silver's gonna be your white wire and green is always gonna be your ground. So what the line is, the line is the one that's coming directly from the breaker. The load is gonna be whatever this GFCI is protecting. Now you can do a, just a line side application, which, which is the way this is wired. You have two wires coming in, one out. It's only going to the load, so it's only protected at this outlet, but this outlet continues on to power something else. Yep. Um, it, I don't know exactly where it goes, but if it's tied to the load side, where one's tied to the line, one's tied to the load, it would be protecting um, something inside the house, and that could be why your bathroom lights don't work or your bathroom outlets. There's many ways to do that. I'm actually gonna show you how to troubleshoot <laughs> one uh, that, is does have other outlets associated with it as well all right thanks for thanks for watching and just to re reiterate we covered how to troubleshoot gfci's um the first one would be we covered if uh if there's no power how to how to diagnose that and then from there you might need an electrician um or you're gonna have to look for loose connections or maybe a trip breaker or a bad breaker things along that line the next one we covered was um, a neutral to ground uh, connection. The third one would be if there was an appliance or something that was shorting it. And you test that by taking the cord out of the GFCI and then pressing the, the reset button. And then if none of those are your issue, then your issue is going to be your GFI is bad. Or you have a wiring issue somewhere else. Um, so we appreciate you for watching and I hope you like the video. What do you say? So now we're troubleshooting a different type of GFCI issue. So as you can see, this one here doesn't have any power. That one there is no power. That one there is no power. And the GFCI itself has no power. And when we push the, the reset button, you can hear it. You got a little bit of flash there. It tells me that there's power behind it, but we're going to pull it. Uh, just to verify All right Now if you notice none of these outlets have anything plugged into them, that's important because um, If the GFCI is not resetting with nothing plugged into it, there's a different issue It could be that uh, The appliance is bad So what you would do is if there is stuff plugged into it unplug all of it test the GFCI if it still trips There's a different issue so now we're going, we have power. You have it on one side and not the other. Now, the, the, the reason you don't have it on the other is because the GFCI is not allowing it passing through. If you can see in that back of the box, 
there's two different lines coming in. So we need to know which one is our line and our load. The line is gonna be the one coming off the breaker. So that's gonna be this one. That's gonna be this one. So when we follow it back, it's the one on the left and on the bottom. That's important because our neutral needs to be on the same side. You can, I don't think you can't barely see that. So the first thing we're gonna do to make sure that this is, that, that this is wired right. Okay, so now we're gonna test across here and here, because that's our hot one and it's corresponding with it. So I'll take my meter, be very careful, because we test and we have power. We're testing across, we have 119 volts. Now that tells me our power is coming in, and now we just need to verify that this thing is on the line side. And it is. So on the back side there, it'll say line or load. It's wired to the line side, so it's wired correctly. So now we have a different problem. It's either the GFCI or you have a neutral to ground connection somewhere. So what we'll do to text that ground to neutral connection to rule out the GFCI being bad is we'll take our tester, we'll put it on continuity or ohms. We'll make sure that our leads are good and it's working and we'll test here. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the load side of the GFCI and the ground. If we get a beep, we have a neutral to ground connection somewhere in one of these outlets. We're just playing a guessing game. Now if one of these outlets pushes in or every time you do something with that outlet, it trips the GFCI, that's a good indicator of where to look. So now we start opening things up and we can turn the power off to that outlet so we can work in it all on um, anything further safely because we know that it's a neutral to ground connection issue that's causing this problem. So when I opened up this outlet here, you can see this wire is smashed in right there and it's touching the neutral. So this is more than likely our problem. I'm gonna take this outlet out. The power is dead, I, but I would, I would recommend testing it first just to verify um, and uh, remedy the problem and then we'll test the GFCI. So there is one thing I forgot to mention on the line side here to the ground, there will always be continuity because it's tied together in your panel. It's not supposed to be on the load side to ground where, where you have a connection. So here, I removed it from touching, and now what I'll do is I'll test the GFI, it reset, I now have power back to my outlets, that was the issue, put everything back together and we're done. 